Hello everyone, today we'll talk about virtual portal but in a technical dive. So we have Alice here with the blue color and we have her friend she wants to establish a virtual world between her friends uh, Bob and Jake. Let's put a smile face on them. Uh, so basically she wants to make a virtual world for them to hang out with. So the first thing she does is that she goes and creates the world on her computer. And now let's call this, this is the world. After she creates the world on her computer, she's going to turn it into a metadata for a transaction. And this metadata will get encrypted by her public key. And we will refer to the public key with the red color here. This is her public key. Uh, and with that, she can basically have a ink, uh, establish a transaction to herself. And in this way, a uh, transaction to herself. And this way, she has a word, uh, a state, initialized state, or like a proven state of the world in her uh, on the Cardano blockchain. Now how can this be useful? Okay, let's assume that uh, both Jake and Bob have a public key on the Cardano blockchain. A public key that that is uh, that's going to be used only for inviting them into any virtual portal. Basically. So what's, what's going to happen in this case? Alice is going to take the transaction metadata and encrypt it using the, using the public key of uh, our friend here, Bob. And, but, and then uh, she will establish a transaction that she's going to send to Bob that has the encrypted metadata. And the same will go for Jake. Our friend here, Jake, will get his public, will, Alice will use his public key and establish an, a transaction with the encrypted metadata of the world and sends it to him. Now, how can this be useful? Uh, by the way, this is Alice. So, with this approach, the metadata here will contain an initialized state, an initialized state of the world. Basically, it's a snapshot that represents some data about the world. And this data can be used to basically bootstrap the world automatically by Bob and Jake. And also, this state has uh, some kind of a way to connect both uh, Bob and Jake with Alice. Now let's take a, a quick way on how can we. By the way, I forgot to mention that also this kind of this the way of specify uh, of using the metadata here can be very flexible. So not only uh, you can establish a, one kind of word, but you can establish different kinds with different, uh, you can establish different kinds with different capabilities and not all of them has to have all of their initialized state in one place but it, they, it can be in different places. So let's take a look here. So Alice for example, uh, this is our friend here Alice, she uses the virtual island which is, uh, this is the virtual island which is basically a game that uses the Cardano blockchain in order to connect people and also uses the virtual portal protocol in order to establish connections and basically establish a trusted virtual world. Alice goes in the game and creates her, uh, and creates her world in a 3D meta. Let's say that it's a 3D. Now Alice can basically turn this 3D into a 2D map, depending on the format of the 
island and other factors we can have some kind of a template and other things and with that Alice can uh, basically use this 2d map in the metadata now another example here is that Alice can also uh, generate some kind of a, a Create a special creator public key, which is going to look, which is going to be look like a key, but this key basically, uh, this key basically, uh, let's give it a special uh, rectangle one. So this public key basically uh, will allow us to create entities on the virtual world, and these entities can generate from different things, such as. Uh, for example, a door entity, or maybe uh, other other and any kind of entities in the world. Uh, for example, an NBC character that can be used, and she is the only person that has a say in creating those entities. But the people can interact with those entities, so that's fine. It depends on the rules that she wants to uh, to specify in her world. Now. This way, we convert, we made, we created a map as a, uh, we created a map using virtual island. We have a public key that we can use, uh, that Alice can use, uh, basically in order to initiate some kind of a admin commands on the world, and everyone can agree with her on it. Anyone who doesn't agree, people don't have to agree with that person, and. Basically, the last important thing here is that the connect approach. And let's discuss a pro this problem a little bit. So, when we connect to people, okay, uh, connecting to individuals basically is between IBs. For example, we have one IB here and another IB. And the IB basically resents an address in which, for example, Alice will connect to Bob. Now, there are some uh, different advantages here on how this works, which basically because the IB can be dynamic, which means both Bob and Alice uh, might lose, uh, both Bob and Alice might have a different IB than the one that they had two days ago. Or two hours ago, it depends. And basically, they will lose the connection. They won't be able to find each other unless they go to some kind of a specialized service. Now, there is a different way on how you can approach this. For example, there is a way that you have Alice and basically you have Bob. And both uh, Alice and Bob have a reference to an, uh, let's say, an IBNS. Okay, an IBNS, which basically is part of the, uh, which is basically part of the IBFS network, which is decentralized, uh, and Alice can own this key basically, and Bob knows about the IBNS, and the IBNS, for example, can uh, have an IB, but this IB can be encrypted in a encrypted uh, that Bob can use for example uh, let's say the uh, wait, uh, let's say for example Bob can use the public key here in order to know uh, or for example a, a special private key I don't think a public key would work but the special private key will uh, basically be able to unlock this IP and the third way, uh, which is centralized, but it, it stick, it, we can assume that it, uh, it, it will work. It will work basically, which is using the DNS. And the DNS works very simple. Alice owns a DNS of the world uh, to connect with the other members, and Bob has access to what kind of a domain the Bob can use. So, for example, uh, Bob can ask for the domain and the same one that Alice holds control to, and Bob can know the IB of Alice, and basically with this, Bob can refer to Alice directly, and both of them can establish a connection with each other. Uh, 
And here uh, in the IB, here by the IBNS, the same here, uh, uh, Bob will have to decrypt the IB using the private key here. This is the private key. So it's a, a private key that Bob has uh, in the encrypted metadata. And Bob can, with, uh, with this private key, apply it in the encrypted IB and refer and get the IB basically. And Bob can use this IB and have an access to Alice. And they can initiate the connection. So as you can see, the part of connecting is very flexible by design. Uh, it can be an IB, which has its own pros and cons, but it's directly. And also it might also open to a DDoS attack. And here, for example, the IB is uh, private, but it, uh, we need some kind of a public key infrastructure, which, by the way, Cardano serves us to use here, which is very cool. And, and if we use a DNS, uh, DNS also can be exposed, and everyone uh, and can be exposed to DD, uh, DDoS, uh, DDoS attacks. And also it uses a different BKI, which is uh, a decentralized BKI currently, which is how the internet works now uh, in the DNS infrastructure. Now with this, uh, let's assume that we use an IBFS here in the island. We use an IBFS architecture uh, to connect both Alice and the other peers. And with this approach, uh, we, can con uh, we can construct our meta data our meta for the island as follow. So let's take a look. So the metadata will work, the metadata for the island will look very simple. Okay, it will hold, uh, firstly, it will hold a public key, a, a bub, an admin, and uh, let's call it an admin public key, which allows uh, an admin public key here. Key. And this admin public key will allow Alice to basically uh, be the person who has some uh, special permissions on the world. So she has some kind of a special permissions that she can uh, use in order to basically have some kind of a control on the world. And the second thing that we can have on the metadata, by the way, this is the transaction metadata on Cardano. The second thing uh, is having a private, uh, let's, uh, let's call it a connect, connect private key. This is private key. By the way, uh, a quick uh, private key, a quick introduction on the public key and private key. The public key basically encrypts data and it can be used to encrypt anything. And the private key can be used to unlock anything that's encrypted by the public key. So that's very useful for us. Now, uh, the, uh, okay, why would we need the connect private key? Basically, let's say we have here Bob and Alice wants to connect to Bob. So Bob uses the private key to access to some kind of an information that will allow to decrypt some kind of an information that will allow both Bob and Alice to connect to each other. The third one will be uh, an IBFS an IBFS uh, address for uh, the world for the world map basically. So uh, remember here we had a 2D map and this 2D map we can have it stored on an IBFS node that's hosted by Alice. We don't have to store it on the chain itself, but you can have it stored on the IBFS. And and also by the way, this this option can be debatable. You can you can put the whole map on the metadata, but it's up to you. And the last but not least is the IBNS uh, address for connecting uh, to Alice. Why it's an IBN, uh, it's very, 
very simple. Uh, one of the cool things about IB, uh, IBN uh, and S is that uh, Alice here can change the value. So this is the IBN S and this is Alice. Alice can give put her encrypted IB. Uh, let's put, let's see here, IB. And she can change it every time that she connects on the internet. So we have the IB here and it will be encrypted and no one will be able to decrypt it except anyone who holds the uh, connect key that we specified here okay I'm trying to draw too fast that's why that's why the draw is work but basically this is the key here the key that will de uh, that will be used to decrypt the IB and uh, the public key of that private key, uh, the public key of that private key is uh, can be random, or we can also use the same IB. Uh, no, we are not going to use the same one because that will change it. But Alice, uh, with the IB and S, Alice has control on how on the value here. This is the value that we want to change. This is here the value, which is the encrypted IB. And every time she connects to the internet, Alice can uh, send her new IB and so on. Every time she connects to the internet, and it will be updated. That's the power of IBNS. And now this whole thing, this this whole metadata, because we want Bob and Alice to connect to each other, we don't want any outsider or any attacker that. Uh, uh, or any person that uh, we cannot trust uh, I don't, let's say this person can be for example some kind of an evil person and this evil person here uh, this evil person wants to intercept their connection and you know become legit uh, we will inc uh, we will use Alice will use Bob's public key Okay, Alice will use Bob's to public key to basically decrypt this, uh, to basically encrypt this whole information, and uh, Bob can use his own key to get this information back and, de and decrypt it from the blockchain. And with this way, Bob can have all the needed information, which is one, an admin public key, two, a connecting private a, a private key that is going to be used in connecting to Alice, and three an IBFS address for the map to download the two D map image, and four an IBNS address connect to know where what's the address of Alice to connect to her what's her internet address. And this way Alice can now uh, basically uh, do this step say. The problem uh, with this design, I forgot to mention, is that Bob has to have a public key. If Bob ha and if Bob doesn't have the public key, how can we know Bob has one? Okay, and we can use Cardano to establish this. So basically, we have here Bob, and what Bob will does is that Bob will create a public key. And we will refer to this public key with the color yellow. And Bob will put this public key on a a, trans, a special transaction, and he can put some kind of a type of this transaction, and call it, uh, for example, portal or virtual portal. And this trans uh, in the metadata for uh, in the metadata. So the beauty of this is that uh, now any person, okay, let's say we have here Alice, we have uh, Jake, Alice and Jake, uh, both Alice and Jake can use this key to basically boots, uh, allow bootstrap any portal for Bob to use. Any some kind of portal for Bob to use using the methods that we described before, and Bob basically can, uh, and also this portal will be encrypted so that no one in the internet can access them, 
and Bob basically will use his own private key, which is going to be referred to as this one. And this private key will be used to uh, dec uh, decrypt the encrypted portal and allow Bob to basically have access to the portal. And that's the only requirement. Um, we can, for example, in this case, uh, have some kind of... Uh, uh, there will be there are multiple ways or multiple options to how can we uh, ask Bob to create to post his public key on the Cardano blockchain. The thing is, Bob doesn't have to put it on the blockchain. Bob can basically give this key to Alice or to Jake through different various ways, and they can use the they can use this in, uh, key uh, to encrypt to basically encrypt the portal on the Cardano blockchain and this is going to be way very trusted because no one's going to be able to encrypt to basically decrypt the portal or know how it works unless they ha they know the public the public key and this way Bob doesn't will not get spammed of virtual portals and other various things now uh, one of the and this uh, I think uh, this way uh, in this video I covered lots of things on how can we connect and how can we establish basically a virtual island and they covered some kind of different details um, and also uh, this is and also explained how the virtual portal works here and and we can put some kind of a standard uh, here, for example, on the way we have some kind of having public keys on the Cardano blockchain so that anyone can use to give encrypted transactions to Bob, uh, encrypted metadata transactions. Um, and also we can have some kind of a standard on the way we have, for example, on basically having uh, on having a virtual portal so that uh, applications can use this to bootstrap anything. Um, basically this whole this whole thing is uh, is this whole design in theory in theory will work and what's beautiful about this is that it's it's as decentralized as it can be and once uh, you get all the all, once you get all the required data, uh, Bob can bootstrap Alice's word. Basically, this is on. Basically, this is a state machine of the word with given, for example, uh, some kind of a state here that can be represented in different various ways or different various values, and this way. Bob can have uh, can then uh, use the virtual portal to communicate to establish a connection to Alice's world and also uh, have the same world as hers and they can uh, depending on the protocol here and this protocol can differ between different things such as for example uh, in on the prototype that we are going to build uh, it's going to be called the fir the virtual island. So the first iron protocol is responsible for uh, connecting them. Uh, I mean, responsible for basically uh, defining a way uh, to communicate with each other. For Bob and Alice to communicate with each other. And also, depending on the design of the protocol, uh, depending on the design of the protocol, uh, you can have different kind of parties, such as Jake, uh, for example, or even uh, Mark, Ali, or anyone else, and they can basically have a world that's completely decentralized and connect with each other. And in this design, uh, there will be some kind of suffering in terms of scalability, but that's okay because 
the protocol here that is going to be used will differ depending on the requirement of the virtual world itself. So having this protocol uh, can be changeable allows us to basically have a uh, have a way to basically connect any world with each other and depending on the requirements of the world we can have a world that that handles a thousand people we can have a world that handles 50 people or a world that handles just five and it depends on how the protocol is designed to handle this amount uh, the amount of scalability and also we maintain security on establishing the virtual world which is this one the world machine here uh, the virtual world and virtual portal successfully made sure that this virtual portal is 100% uh, the, the same as this one when it started but now when we want those virtual worlds to communicate with each other it's a completely different story but what Cardano has done here, it served here as a PKI infrastructure and also a way to a way to establish those virtual worlds in a secure manner without any third party. So that's uh, thank uh, that's the whole video. I hope you understand. I'm sorry if there was any. Uh, anything that's uh, not correct that I said here I will uh, review the video and write the comment uh, write in the comments what uh, my corrections of if I said anything that's wrong and uh, I want to know what's your feedback about this how can we improve this model of the virtual portal and how can we basically make it better is there anything uh, that I missed? Is there any property that I should care about uh, in the model? Thank you very much for watching and I hope you like this video. See you later.